Team Jesus bless you. Thank you guys for being here. And I was reading in the book Ecclesiastes today, uh, King Solomon writes how there is a time and a season for a multitude of things. You know, we go through seasons. Right now, I'm in the furnace, I'm in uh, spiritual warfare. And I'll speak a little bit about that, where I think it began. You know, I think of in the book of Psalms, King David, as I've been reading Psalms also, you know, when he, when he had been speaking about the more challenging times, I was in a season a few weeks ago where I couldn't relate with that, you know, at a higher level. I was not in a season of great, well, more um, fine-tuned and just kind of intense and acute spiritual warfare like I am now. So I would read that and I would just be like, I would think like, yeah, I've been there before, but I was kind of like thankful that I wasn't in that season currently. And now when I read those things where he's like, you know, my tears are my bread and not like it's the exact same thing for me, but just more of this struggling and Lord, where are you? Do you hear me? How much longer? It's crazy times and seasons for everything right now. I can totally relate to that where it's like where King David was on the run from Saul. His life was, you know, in the balance. His future was unknown. God made a promise to him, yet here's this persecution and this trouble. And it's like, you, you get questions sometimes, like, what's going on? How much longer? Why? You know, all these questions. I go through it also. And um, for me, when I think it began, I've been doing some training for jail ministry the past several weeks. And as I've just been kind of thinking, like, with these fiery darts from the enemy, attacking thoughts, um, just being bothersome, stealing some of my joy, just being like a, like, a, like a horse fly bothering you, you know, just always near and assailing in, in different ways. So I'm thinking the, the correlation with the jail ministry, could it be? When we strive after the Lord, um, we've got the devil's attention in a certain sense, and for me, I know this, and when the darts aren't too bad or, you know, whatever, when it's like I feel like I'm a rising above all the um, assailing from the devil or if he's not hitting me too hard, you know, I, I feel like um, I understand that truth that, he, that I've got his attention and I'm just, I'm still moving forth in courage and confidence and power. <clears throat> but now it's kind of like when I think of even like the book of Job, when Satan was allowed to, to torment and mess with Job. And, um, you know, it really broke down Job and, and, and uh, was heavy and grievous on him. But anyways, the fact that we have the devil's attention, and uh, even when it hurts and he starts assailing us and bothering us, um, it's a good sign. We're, we're striving. We care. We care about the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring the sword and division. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to speak a little bit about Matthew 10. Jesus is sending out the disciples. Um, and what he kind of speaks about how, how that's going to look for you. But Jesus has some words of encouragement. <clears throat> Talking about that. I also saw a brief article about um, some actor and his wife. And they've been married for a long time. which um, And this was through end time headlines. Which is rare kind of in Hollywood. But anyways, they're, they're believers that they, they say they are and they said they've had an awesome marriage but the last few years have been like the hardest they've ever had and um, and the wife says and I think it's because you know I just took the deep dive into Jesus and I think that he her husband didn't quite know what to do with that because it was kind of all Jesus all the time oh my gosh I can relate to that so anyways you see this, this woman was uh, striving and it was important and the devil hates that because he knows us brethren we are saved we are secure so he wants to hinder our walk so we don't bless and help others and um, so when you deep dive into Jesus when you care just like that's all you want to do
attacks come and they're just super annoying, right? All right, so Matthew 10. <clears throat> I'm just going to go through some different verses here. So uh, if you have scripture, Matthew 10 from the beginning, and kind of scan through, I'll jump around through most of it. So when he, Jesus, had called the 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. <laughs> that jumps out. When we're called, we're given power. The devil hates that. The devil wants to hinder our walk. Right? Again, he can't steal our salvation. We're going to where he fell from, so he's upset about that. He doesn't want us taking others with us to glory because he wants them. You know, the devil's depraved and wicked. Uh, but rather, Jesus saying, continuing, go to the lost sheep uh, of the house of Israel. It makes me think, like, that's who we go to. We go to, we're obedient. We go to the ones whom the Lord calls us to. But um, sometimes it may be those who are just lost. Now here, Jesus was saying of Israel, uh, salvation to the Jews first. But for us, the biblical principle is, you know, we want to bring salvation to the lost. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's not just actions. It's not just being nice. It's preaching speaking, making a good confession, uh, Bible prophecy, uh, the kingdom is coming, King Jesus is coming, uh, the worst seven years of human history is coming, coming, know Jesus before then so you don't have to go through it, behold I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves, that's right, we go amidst wolves, Paul also tells us we, uh, uh, it's, it's a, we fight not against flesh and blood, so we go around people who might hate us and stuff, but there are spirits behind them, in them. They hate the Holy Spirit in us uh, sometimes. Other times they recognize the Holy Spirit in us and, they, and the Lord will move on them. And they'd be like, I, that is a, a fragrant aroma. I want that. I want salvation, right? Some will come. Most won't. Verse 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. He has no kidding, man feel hatred sometimes. The demons hate us. They can manifest in the people and the people hate us and they cause problems. Um, but we'll endure to the end. And how do we do that? It's not a works-based endurance. endurance. The Holy Spirit will help us endure uh, to the end. Whether that be a, a mortal death or the catching away. Verse 27, What I tell you in darkness, speak ye in light and what ye hear in the ear, preach upon the housetops. So in your prayer time, in your time in the Word, you're going to get senses from the Lord. What He impresses on you, we, we speak. We don't just keep it in. Like I think of Jesus' mother, Mary. They said a lot of things she kept in her heart. And uh, we, we want to make sure we share those things. We don't want to just hog the blessings and the revelations and the communion time with Jesus and His Word and prayer. Just be like, that's mine. That's awesome. If the Holy Spirit doesn't you know, prompt you to share it, I guess you could. You want to be obedient. But... We want to edify and say that which is uplifting and hopeful. So a lot of times we're going to want to share our time with King Jesus so as to encourage other people. Verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So yeah, when we get the, the hatred manifested through people from these powers and principalities, uh, you know, it can be freaky, but we don't want to fear that because the worst they can do to us is kill us mortally. But we fear God alone. We, we only fear the Lord um, because He is able to do so much more than just killing our body, right? He, he holds our eternity in the balance. That's a good way to look at it. When we are assailed against by the enemy, through people, through whatever, we realize there is one greater than you. Devil, demons, people who hate me. Like, I'm going to bless you. I'm not going to curse you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to pray for you. 28 are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without you, Father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore ye are of much more value than the sparrows. So, uh, yeah, the Lord is, is encouraging us right there. It's pretty clear. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Again, this, this is where our call as believers goes far beyond just being like kind and, and doing works. Uh, it's preaching. We've got to preach the truth. We've got to confess the Father before all men and, and figure out a way to work that creatively into conversation. Well, people must hear about that hope, um, right? They, they, and then the Lord will confess us before the Father, right? We, um, 
take some boldness to do that. The Lord will give it to you. The Lord is doing it in you guys. He's growing you. And um, certainly you're going to find more opportunities and more boldness and more desire to share Jesus. You really are. Kim was at the, the tax collector today getting her plates and her new uh, license for my move up north to Florida. And um, the process was going great and everything. And, and she, she, she made a proclamation out of joy. She said, thank you, Jesus. And that's bold to say and um, this is great. This is a seed thrown in the air. And whoever heard it, that's good. They're like, wow, thank you, Jesus. What's up with that? She's happy. Look at her glowing. The Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful thing. Jesus continues, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Again, man, that peace doesn't come until the millennial kingdom when King Jesus, after he catches us away, glory, seven years, comes. we come down with him to rule and reign. That's that government on King Jesus' shoulders that's peaceful and perfect, and even the animals get along great. But now, Jesus brings division. He is a stumbling block, and woe to those who stumble on this block. Scripture tells us Jesus Christ, the most controversial God-man um, ever, right? Because uh, he, he brings testimony against the wickedness of man, and people love their sin, uh, and they love the darkness opposed to the truth and the light. Jesus continues, verse 35, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be of his own household. Yep, sometimes that's how that division happens. And um, it's a challenge for so many of us, but we pick Team Jesus. We must, and by our witness and our walk and our fidelity to honor God, we can bring those of our family to faith on Jesus. He that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. We can love our father and our parents and our sons and daughters, but not more than Jesus. we got to keep that hierarchy. God first, spouse, then children, uh, family, loved ones, etc. God is first, right? Uh, like Abraham ready to sacrifice Isaac. He, he honored God first, even over his son who he loved, whom God promised and gave to him miraculously got to do it too. We got to hold those things in a loose hand. It's freaky. But when we are obedient, we will, what? We'll definitely be blessed. And he that taketh not his cross, verse 38, and follow after me is not worthy of me. So it's going to hurt. It's going to be work. It's going to be um, challenging sometimes. Carrying a cross, that's a brutal thing. That's not fun. It doesn't have to always be fun because uh, we can get the peace that surpasses all understanding. We, we, Accept the things the Lord has for us, even when it hurts. We try to hug the cactus when it's presented instead of jerk our hand away. And um, we, uh, Jesus is our model. We imitate what he did. He got up. He said, come, my accusers are here. He met the challenge. We're going to have that same boldness and courage because we have the same Holy Spirit that is in King Jesus. All right. And what I wanted to end with was... Verse 39 here of uh, Matthew 10. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So that's an encouraging way to end this video here. We hold our life, our everything, our most important things, cherished things, blessings from the Lord in an open hand. We, uh, we lose our life to this old world, to everything. And as the Lord continues to sanctify us, it's going to be less about maybe doing physical sin and such, and it's going to be more like what I've been experiencing, the fiery darts of the enemy on thoughts and thinking and memories, where you can just tell it's from the evil one because it'll persist and it'll just linger, and where it's like almost like by minutes you're praying, you're like, Lord, this is bothersome, I don't like it, uh, because you don't want to sin in your, your heart and your, your thoughts and stuff. But uh, that sanctification... And we want to lose all um, semblance of just that old life and, and those temptations. Give it no air time. <clears throat> um, hold every thought captive to Christ. Again, it's huge because thoughts will lead to feelings, will lead to actions. So, guys, I hope this encourages you. You guys are struggling too. Um, there's nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again. Humanity, we struggle. There's no perfection here on earth. That's why King Jesus again and again and again, at the end of the day, start of the day, middle of the day, he's so glorious and beautiful like the, the noonday sun because uh, like the Apostle Paul says, we do the things we hate, we don't do the things we love. 
wretched man that I am. We see such things and uh, we're like, gosh, I know what's right and I love it and, and it's hard and, and I see what's wrong and I hate it, but I sometimes get in it. It's like, hey, that's okay. Um, it's not okay to sin, but um, if it happens, we just we, we cling to Jesus, we turn to Jesus, and we understand, like, Jesus, you're so awesome. You are all I need because um, at the end of the day, that's, that's the security. That's one thing that will never be lost or taken away. So there's a price to pay. We've got the devil's attention. He's bothering us. But we have scripture. We have the promises of King Jesus. We have a glorious inheritance. Uh, the takeaway I had wrote down is, uh, yeah, in finding that life and losing your other life, there's the seasons we go through the ups and the downs. But the promise and what we know through Bible prophecy is soon and very soon glory are catching away and it's done so persevere and do what you have to do more scripture i'm going to incorporate i'm reading bible in a year like i do i'm going to start doing it again like what will be the next days probably two times a day i've been incorporating fasting i did like 18 hours again yesterday um more prayer too so we're just gonna we're not gonna give the devil anything to um rejoice about right we're not going to back off thinking, man, I feel the heat. Maybe I shouldn't do so much. You know, the devil is mad. I, I sense that. I'm like, he's mad. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do more. I'm not going to be um, ashamed. I'm not going to be weak. I'm going to be a strong man of God. So um, you guys do the same. Be courageous. We have the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is going to power us to be able to do these things I speak of. So thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you for your prayers. It means everything. When I see each one of you in glory, I'm, I'm going to hug you guys so much, each one of you. Appreciate it so much. I truly do. And my prayers for you are daily and shall continue. So love you guys so much. Thanks for watching my video. Um, please hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to my channel and share this video. Uh, King Jesus willing, if we're still here, if we're not in glory yet, um, I will see you tomorrow with another video. God bless you.